again, everybody, and welcome to the Matilda Mossman Show. I'm Bruce Howard, joined by the head women's basketball coach at the University of Tulsa, Matilda Mossman. Quite a week, coach. You get a road win, you get a home win, 2-0. Not bad, huh? Yeah, it's a pretty good feeling, especially going on the road and at Cincinnati and being able to come out of there with a win and then uh, at home against a really strong Memphis team. Uh, just Our guys just have played really good defense in those two games, uh, really locked down on some... Um, uh, post players who are some of the best in our league and uh, just, you know, an undersized group uh, going against uh, uh, people that are a lot bigger than us. And our, our guys have just bought into the whole total team defense thing and we were able to shut some people down. Yeah, and the good part about the week was the way you finished with offense. And we'll talk about that later in the Memphis game, but you finally unlocked things offensively and really got it going in that second game, huh? Yeah, it makes a difference game. when you're making shots. Uh, we got off to a good start against Cincinnati, hit some shots early, and then Memphis game, we had more turnovers than we had shots uh, in the early going, but once we started uh, getting into a rhythm, uh, shots were falling, and, and, and that's what's most important is, is us getting into a rhythm. And so we've really stressed uh, ball movement, we've stressed inside, outside, and, and not that we haven't stressed that stuff before, it's, we just have added an extra importance to it and we've shown film on, you know, this is what happens when you move the ball. This is what happens when you get inside touches and you kick it back out because we feel like we have good shooters on the perimeter, but we have to get them in rhythm to be able to get good shots. Absolutely. So you go to Cincinnati taking on the Bearcats, never an easy trip for anybody, but, uh, uh, you know, you're able to get there uh, in, in good in good time and then, and then play a, a good game, and you played mostly from ahead, right? We, we did. Uh, we jumped out to a good lead, and, um, you know, Amari Thomas is one of the best players in our league, preseason co-player of the year, uh, extremely... Uh, extremely physical, extremely talented. Uh, we held her to 24 points, which is her, which at that time was her second lowest uh, output of the season. She was averaging 28 or 29. So we felt good about how we defended her. Uh, but in the late going, when they were behind, it was an added incentive, go get the ball to Amari, get the ball to Amari. And, and she's really good at different places on the floor. She can catch it at the high post and go score. She can catch it on the perimeter. She can catch it on the block. She does a lot of different things uh, that makes her successful. Well, and you know, you had to go with different defenders on her, waves of defenders on her, smothering her, whatever, because she played all 40 minutes. I mean, she didn't come out of the <laughs> yeah. game once. Did and, she? and that's not rare for her. She doesn't foul. I think at the time we played them, she had played six games and committed 10 fouls. And I think we uh, maybe drew two or three fouls on her. I uh, thought Kayla Moutry and, and Desiree Lewis did a fantastic job defending her. They just kind of kept taking turns, and, and Kayla Moutry took two charges on her. Uh, she took a third charge in the game. Uh, Maya Mayberry took a charge in the game. So, uh, you know, that tells you that your help defense is in the right position. And offensively, you get performances, new career high performances out of two of your freshmen. Well, I've had Mayberry had 20, and then Jessica Evans had 13, and I think nine rebounds. So those are two freshmen that really step forward for you. Yeah, Jessica did. Uh, um, it was a really good outing for her. Didn't miss a lot of shots. The nine rebounds were huge. Uh, I think she led us in rebounding in that game. Uh, but she continues to evolve and, you know, the game is starting to slow down for her a little bit. Uh, but she's so valuable because she can rebound, uh, she can score inside, and she can hit the three-pointer, which pulls defenses out on her. Uh, and then, you know, Yvette uh, had a good scoring night. But Yvette has been so good just taking care of the ball, not making a lot of mistakes, making people around her better. Yeah, and she had the, the 20 points and four three-pointers, which again is important. But again, like, like what would happen a few days later against Memphis, you, don't, you probably don't get the open looks without a little penetration, a little bit of drive and kick, right? Right, and, and again, that's something we've been trying to stress. And, you know, guys just have to get comfortable with, with moving the ball and going inside, outside. I, you know, I, th I thought Ella uh, Rafael Snowder did a great job in both of those games, more so in the Memphis game, of just being that person in the middle, you know, kind of a pressure release. Uh, she's really good at reversing the ball. Uh, she and Desiree have a good connection inside where if one of them catches it on the block, they're always looking for the other one on a dive or in a short corner. So, you know, just now that we've played some games, we've played six now, 
uh, playing some games definitely helps when you're trying to get into a rhythm as a team and trying to uh, you know, figure out who's going to be where in certain situations. So we're kind of seeing some of that come together. So you shoot about the same as Cincinnati. You get to the line 12 times. Um, you're out rebounded in the game, which is not unusual for your team as long as you can kind of keep it fairly close. I think right. you feel pretty good about that. So what right. was the difference? Uh, I, just our, our low number of turnovers. You know, you mentioned we went 11 of 12 from the free throw line. Uh, we had hit 11 in a row at one point. And, uh, and you know, the rebounding thing, we, we're just going to have to keep battling, keep battling. We're, we're not a great rebounding team, partly because of our size and partly because it's, it's just not enough of a mentality among each individual player. And in the Memphis game, we played some zone, and it's harder to, to block out in a zone. And, uh, you know, we just got mismatches all over the floor. And, uh, we, you know, we just got to keep battling. We're going to give up some rebounds. We, we know that. Uh, and then on the other side, when you're not shooting it well, that gives the other team a lot of rebounds right. because there's a lot of missed shots. So there's a lot of things that factor into that. Well, sure, and you force 19 turnovers. Uh, you're one of the best mm -hmm. in the nation at forcing turnovers of the other team. So. Those are stops without the benefit of a rebound, which is something that maybe kind of goes unnoticed. I think um, Wyvet Mayberry has been a really good defender on the ball. Rebecca Lasky has been a really good defender off the ball. Uh, Ella has, has had some deflections inside. Kayla Mutri causes some deflections. So sometimes the people that get credit for the steal aren't really the ones that got the deflection in the first place. So again, it comes down to uh, playing team defense and and being and just kind of anticipating where the next pass is going. And so you get a big win at Cincinnati, uh, certainly important uh, for the team. And now you come back home and get ready for Memphis. Got a couple of days to get ready for them. What was your concern going in? Oh, gosh, they've got uh, two post players that are both 6'3", both uh, juniors and seniors. Uh, and then they had a post player coming off the bench who was had really had been their best post scorer in the last few games. It turned out Lynetta Williams was unable to play in the game, so they went with Helena Davis and um, Manjadu. But uh, those two are a ton inside. They're just they're big, they're physical. Uh, they 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 get a lot of points off offensive rebounds. Uh, and they're really hard to stop. But I, again, I felt like our guys did a did a good job. Uh, fourth quarter, they kind of got close because the, the, it was an added emphasis to get, get touches by, the, by those two guys. And, uh, you know, at some point they start to wear you down. And uh, fortunately, we ran out of time and we, we still had the lead. <laughs> yeah, it was a terrific win for the Hurricane at home. And uh, as we mentioned, and this is, this is a stat that I looked at and looked at again and then looked at it again. Uh, your high field goal shooting percentage-wise coming into the Memphis game was 39%. That's the best you've done. And so in this game, you know, you end up shooting uh, just a terrific percentage of what, 43%. And there was a lot of the game where you're in the 50s. You're 56, 55, whatever. Uh, kind of went down at the end of the game. But you had your best shooting day. Yeah, if, especially the first three quarters. We shot it really well. But again, it's about being in a rhythm, getting some inside, outside stuff. Uh, fourth quarter, um, you know, we, I thought we, we got a little hurried in what we were doing. We got out of rhythm. and. And then when that happens, your, your shots aren't going to fall. Yeah, 47% from the field for the Hurricane uh, in the ball game. Uh, again, you, you kind of played from, from ahead. Uh, you had the halftime lead. Uh, good third quarter for you. And then, and then as you mentioned, kind of kind of hanging on. Had a few turnovers at the end that, that gave you, I'm sure, a little bit of indigestion. However, you forced 26 turnovers on Memphis. And I thought that was one of the important aspects of the game, wasn't it? Yeah, and we only had 13 ourselves. And, and we continue to do a good job of taking care of the basketball. Um, and as you mentioned, we're, we're playing good enough defense that we're forcing some turnovers. It's just, um, you know, we've got to continue to just outwork people. Uh, you know, things aren't going to just, just come to us. We've got to go make things happen, and that's what we've done, especially in these last two games. Maya Mayberry was unbelievable. 28 points in the ball game. She shot 9 of 11. She had three three-pointers. She was 7 of 8 from the line. I don't know if you can expect much more from, uh, from your transfer. She's really good in that game. Yeah, I think she missed one shot in the first half and one shot in the second half. Uh, you know, she was definitely in rhythm. Uh, there's no question that she was in rhythm. Uh, she's really good at spotting up on the on the wing, and and as somebody uh, penetrates and draws her defender, she's really good about having her feet and her hands ready to catch it and shoot it when the ball comes back out to her. And I think that's part of what makes her so successful. 
Yvette Mayberry had a good game as well, 15 points. And again, I think a lot of what we talked about earlier, Coach, Yvette would penetrate, get in the paint, draw those defenders, and then kick to her sister. Yeah, and Yvette had, had seven assists and six steals in the game. And, um, you know, those, those six steals lead to transition baskets at the other end. Uh, obviously, with the, the assist, she's finding open people. And, and that's what I said at the opening about her making people around her better. Uh, when, when, when you can distribute the ball and be able to score in double figures yourself, but still be able to distribute the ball for other people to score, that's making people around you better. Maddie Biddle gave you some good minutes off the bench, didn't she? Ma Maddie was huge. Uh, and, and, you know, the stat sheet only tells you what she did offensively, but she did a great defensive job. Uh, their, uh, Ty Jones was kind of their, their best player on the floor, and Ty was kind of hurting us uh, in the first three quarters. And once we put Maddie in and, and had her guarding Ty, it pretty much shut Ty down the rest of the night. Yeah, they, they uh, obviously made their run, um, but your defense, I think, in the first three quarters was enormous as well, wasn't it? To, to not only shoot the ball well, but then, you know, and, and you're able to get a lead as large as 14 in that second half, and uh, you know, that was enough. Yeah, it, the first half, I thought both teams were really good offensively. Mm -hmm. uh, we kept trading baskets. Um, you know, they were making big shots. We were making big shots. You know, both teams were shooting. We shot 50% in the first quarter. They shot 44%, and it just continued in the second quarter. The difference was in the last, like, minute and a half of the second quarter, we made a little run. We outscored them 5-0 and went into halftime with a five-point lead. And then we came back out in the third quarter and went on, I think, an 8-0 run to open up the third quarter. So it was that last minute and a half and that first two or three minutes of the, of the second half that made the difference in the game. Absolutely. And the Hurricane on a little bit of a run with that two-game winning streak. Now 2-3 and three in the league and 3-3 three and three overall. Only the one non-league game this year. And that I don't want to say that puts you behind the eight ball because other, other teams are kind of experiencing the same thing. But you may be one of the few that had only one non-league game. Uh, you know, for you to be playing game number six on Saturday is very unusual, but you're getting there, aren't you? And I think that hurt us early on, especially the three teams that we played first, you know, all contenders in our league at, at, the, at the highest level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, I think now that we've played six games, we're starting to learn a little bit more about not only coaches learning about our players, but players learning about each other. And, you know, you can practice all you want and you can keep track of stats and you can look at combinations. But when they get on the floor, what they do in a performance wise and what they do together makes a huge difference. And so you need games to, to be able to figure all that out. And early on, we weren't having any games and so it made it harder but we feel like we're getting into a little bit better rhythm in terms of rotations and, and who to have on the floor at certain times. So it, it's a much better feeling having played a few games, especially in a row. Absolutely, and two games this past week for the Hurricane, which was great, and they were both wins at Cincinnati and at home against Memphis. We'll talk about the week coming up and take a look at standings when we continue on the Matilda Mossman Show. the American. What is true blue? It's true loyalty. Supporting others with unwavering commitment. It's true innovation. Thinking creatively and strategically to make a difference. It's true strength. Taking risks and standing up for what's right. True blue is a 125 year legacy. Find the true you at the University of Tulsa. We're back on the Matilda Mossman Show. And, uh, Coach, as we look at the standings, first of all, uh, boy, the, the two wins certainly help. You're now two and three and try to get a little bit more of that upward mobility in the American Athletic Conference. But, obviously, uh, USF is, is really good. They're 6-0 and in the league, 4-0 and for Temple. But, uh, you know, beyond that, you know, lower than that, there's lots of movement back and forth, isn't there? 
There, there is, but the, you know, the South Florida Temple, even UCF, ha right. they've been dominating uh, so far, and, and uh, UCF just lost, uh, I think, at Temple um, on Saturday, so that gave uh, UCF their first loss. But, and so we had to play those three teams right out of the, right from the jump, and, and now you look at coming in against Houston, and, and they've lost three in a row but it's been against those teams. They've lost to Tulane, lost to South Florida, uh, lost to UCF. So um, it's all about who you play. And, you know, that was a tough stretch for us. And then t Houston just got off of a really tough stretch. So I know they're going to be hungry coming into our game on Wednesday. Yeah, it's not only who you play, but when you play them as well. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, Houston very similar. I mean, records two and three, both teams coming in at two and three, both teams with the similar losses, as you mentioned. Uh, how does that matchup look for you on Wednesday at Houston? Well, Houston plays a ton of people. I mean, you can count 11, 12, they're going to play every game. Uh, they're very balanced scoring. I think they've got maybe five, six people that all average seven or more points a game. Uh, Brittany Onyege is their shooter. Uh, that is probably their leading scorer right now. But uh, Houston in the past has been more of a dribble drive team, get to the rim, get to the free throw line, but they haven't been great shooters from the outside. They have shooters now, especially with the addition of Brittany Onyege. Um, they have shooters. So now in their dribble drive, when they kick it, that those are three-point shots, and, and they're shooting a lot of them. They've shot, uh, uh, oh gosh, uh, 221 threes wow. already in uh, nine games. So they're putting up a lot of shots, um, averaging uh, over uh, 70 points a game. So. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough matchup defensively, and it's going to be different be from the last two teams we've played because they do have an inside game, uh, but not nothing like Amari Thomas and uh, Minjay Adu and, and Alana Davis. But they've got uh, Bria Patterson, who is a good face-up four player, and as I mentioned, Brittany uh, from the perimeter, and then Erica Sidney on the perimeter. They've got some, some good perimeter options. So this will be interesting, because you have a couple of similar teams in terms of mm -hmm. perhaps guard-oriented in a lot of ways, huh? Yeah, like uh, uh, the preparation for, for Cincinnati and Memphis were very similar. Uh, preparation for Houston is going to be a lot different. Three o'clock game on Wednesday for the Hurricane at Houston, then at home on Saturday against Tulane. That game starts at one o'clock right here at the uh, Reynolds Center. And uh, it's all part of a week of coaches against racism. What does that mean to you, especially considering the civil unrest and of course, uh, social justice and, and that movement? Uh, what does it mean to you to be a part of coaches against racism? Well, I think what's gone on in our country uh, has been very troubling. Um, you know, I, I've, our student athletes are troubled by all this and to see the, the pain that they have to go through and, and uh, being treated differently because of the color of their skin, you just, you just feel for them. And um, so it, it's important to, to bring attention, uh, bring positive attention and uh, you know, whatever we can do to, to promote that on a national level. Uh, you know, we want to do that. And uh, part of the process, both for the men's and women's team, has been to go down to Black Wall Street and go to the John Hope Franklin uh, Reconciliation Center in, mm -hmm. in downtown Tulsa. I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's an easy trip, but yeah, you can get down there and, and, and really learn a lot about history that a lot of folks perhaps in Tulsa don't even know. Yeah, when we got back uh, in July, back on campus, we took our guys down to the Greenwood District or Black Wall Street and, and uh, the John Hope Franklin uh, Reconciliation Park. A lot of history there. Uh, there's so much, I mean, and we didn't, we were there a couple hours and we still didn't see it all. And there's so much to learn by just going down there and, and just stopping into the local businesses and, and, you know, visiting with them about, you know, how things have transpired. And I thought it was a really good trip for our young women and one that we should probably do uh, on a regular basis. Absolutely. And then next Monday when we tape this show again, when we get that thing going, uh, you know, it'll be MLK Day. So that'll, that'll obviously uh, continue that process, if you will, or continue that discussion. And, and we can maybe uh, dive dive into that next week when we when we get there but next Monday MLK day certainly an important day isn't it absolutely and uh, you know we look forward to uh, continuing with the messaging and uh, this week and, and especially on Saturday so people who tune into the game uh, you know maybe there's I'm sure there's going to be 
something said about that. And, uh, you know, if people have the opportunity to come into Tulsa, go down to the Greenwood District and, and kind of check into things that are going on there. Absolutely. And the conference is going to send out a pin that all the coaches will be wearing during the rest of the year, which will celebrate coaches against racism. Coach, have a great week. Uh, go, go win a couple more. Huh? All right. Thanks, Bruce. Matilda Mossman, the head coach of University of Tulsa women's basketball. And we'll talk to you next week. So long, everybody.